My research is in the area of transport protocols and the dominant transport protocol which is TCP which has been used on the internet for more than two decades now people have shown that it simply will not scale beyond even a gigabit per second. So researchers have worked on newer and newer protocols that can help scale better, but they sort of adopt the same framework that TCP does. So what we have done in our research is taken a step back, shed this legacy framework, and come up with a new paradigm that can, uh, in theory and on paper at least, help us scale to even terabit per second networks. And these high network speeds, terabit per second, are really what physicists and astronomers and the scientific community would need to be able to really harness the power of computing. So most of the protocols people have designed in the past um, use this legacy framework, which has a fundamental speed and overhead trade-off. If they try to scale to higher speeds, they also impose a huge overhead on the network. If they don't impose an overhead, they can't scale well. The transport protocol wants to figure out at what rate can it send data. What it does is it tries to send you know, some packets at that rate and see if they make their way through fine or not. If they don't make their way fine, then it says, okay, this must be too high, let me you know, scale down. Now, when it tries to do this at long time scales, it's sending a huge volume of packets as part of the probe. If you're talking about 10 gigabits per second networks, you could be sending 100,000 packets into the network. If the network can't handle it, you're gone, right? So, so that's the reason they have to be careful. Okay, let me try, but let me not try a speed that's too high. So they have to be very cautious in probing for the network, which means they'll take lots and lots of time to get up to terabit per second speeds. What we are saying is, let's think it differently. Let's use a really small time scale for probing. Of course, that's a fundamental notion. In order to support that, you have to add other mechanisms. But if you are able to support this idea that I'll probe the network only in a very small time scale, I'm just sending you know, a couple of hundred packets perhaps into the network. Even if the network can't handle them, I'm not causing much damage to the network. And that's really important because I'm not the only scientist who's going to be using the network. There may be hundreds of scientists. And if everybody starts you know, sending these huge volumes of probes, without uh, really knowing whether the network can handle, then that's just gonna cause some kind of a congestion collapse in the network. So we have just uh, submitted a proposal to this Office of Cyber Infrastructure to take this paradigm and develop 10 gigabits per second and higher speed uh, implementations, production quality implementations of this paradigm on Linux. And uh, this is, the emphasis is to really produce uh, well working production quality stacks and so testing is a big part of this proposal and the ben test bed is really where we are going to test its scalability to high speeds and also use this connection to the national lambda rail to basically give evidence to the scientists who will be deploying this protocol that yes it can give you real benefits once you grow up across really long distance paths and really high speed network paths the whole thrust of most of our research, and particularly my research over the last many years, has been to bring science to networking. And by what I mean in bringing science to networking, all uh, new protocol ideas, all new routers, switches, mechanisms and routers and switches, all ultimately have to be evaluated in some context. And in many cases, this is not done with what I, what I and a lot of others consider sound scientific methodology, and particularly in two, two areas. One is creating realistic conditions in the lab or in the test bed that reflect what is going to happen in the real internet. The second is to be able to have controlled and reproducible experiments. You don't know whether a protocol or a mechanism is working properly if you can't try it in different contexts with different types of traffic with different loads and expect to be able to reproduce those consistently. You know, no, sci no scientist would make a claim about a result unless somebody else can reproduce that result. And so the, the investment that we've made in this lab is essentially to create the environment in which we can 
A, reproduce the traffic conditions that these protocols and mechanisms would encounter in real internet, and B, do it in a controlled environment where we have control of everything. And the, the most important part of that is being able to reproduce the traffic. And we've worked for a long time on methodology to start with um, packet traces from live networks, create uh, synthetic models of, those, of that traffic, regenerate it in the lab, and then run that traffic in the lab network against the protocols, mechanisms that we are trying to evaluate. And because we can control that traffic, then we can control the experiments. And a lot of people just can't wrap their heads around this idea that we can take 50 or 100 machines in our lab and accurately reproduce the traffic that traverses a, a network backbone link or traverses the links that connect UNC to the world. But we've done that with um, very sound statistical measures of before and after and published a lot of papers showing that some dissertations have come out of that. Where that ties back to Jasmine's work and our work with Renzi is that because we have been able to establish this configuration where we have machines in our lab going out through Bend over the National Lambda Rail back to another set of machines in our lab means that we can run our traffic generation mechanisms on our machines with our traffic generating uh, systems and run that traffic over this large scale uh, national network that Jasmine was talking about. Which means we have at least some control, not total control over the, the traffic. The whole idea that we can extend our lab and extend our traffic generation mechanisms to a national network just opens up a whole world of research that we couldn't do before. And since we were very successful with the research that we did right here in the lab, and I like to think that we have uh, contributed to the whole field of networking because we, we see people now publish papers that actually reproduce our methodology in you know whatever they're they're doing. So I think we have had a had a profound influence on that. And now we're taking it to yet another step by adding the Ben Renzi NLR connection to it, which is going to make us, I think, one of the premier uh, experimental uh, networking uh, facilities in the country.